Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time and I'm here for my regular Monday this and that video and for those of you who are new, this is just a weekly vlog that I do, which means it, I'm covering a whole bunch of different topics to give you updates on various things, lead you back to old videos that I have, maybe let you know about videos that are coming out, or just new things that I discovered that are kind of fun and exciting. So just please know, a multi-topic video, separate from my single topic videos, and I can't fit all the topics into the title, so I'm only gonna list one or two. So if you're coming in for one of those one or two, please be patient. All right, so let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is the hair ties that you see me wear. I get a few questions about those. I don't wear these for any religious reason. I just came up with them one day, the idea for them. And all they are is a long piece of triple layered yarn that I crocheted and then made tassels on the end. That's all they are. So they're made for me to wear as a headband like you see me doing here or to tie my hair back loosely more into a very wide ponytail or if I have my hair pulled back into a sloppy bun and I just want to add a little color I'll tie it around that. That's all it is. So if you're interested in these not only do I have a video on how to make them yourself that I'll link to in the description box down below, I also sell them on my Etsy store. And even though I have a list of different colors noted on the store, you can also custom order any selection of three colors because I use three strands of yarn so you can pick three different colors of yarn and just message me on the Etsy store and let me know what three colors you want and I can custom make it for you. Otherwise you can just pick one of the color combinations I already have up there. But again, check out that video, if you, especially if you already crochet. It's a pretty simple process to make it. I also have in that same video how to make your own homemade scrunchies and some options there, especially if you want to fancy them up for little girls and such. It's really kind of a fun thing to do. So now let's get on to the thing I'm most excited about talking about today because I discovered this basically by accident. So I was shooting a video the other day about how I dehydrated the turkey broth that had been storing up in the freezer for the past few years and I pulled out a couple more jars of what I thought was turkey broth and didn't realize until after I got done shooting the video that's not what it was but I had actually thawed out a couple of jars of just regular turkey and I think that that was from 2019 but because I had a cloth wrapped around it and I didn't pay close attention to what it said on the top of the jar I didn't realize till I took the cloth off of the jars that it was actually chunks of turkey meat so I thought well I'm dehydrating the broth anyway I'll go ahead and throw the turkey in there and dehydrate that too and that's what I have in here and you can see it's broken up pretty small and here is what's really exciting. It's not the first time I've dehydrated chicken or turkey. And I like to do that every so often just to snack on it. But sometimes it can come out rather tough. And so here's what I discovered. By freezing it first and then dehydrating it, it makes it as crispy as if I had freeze dried it. And I thought that was pretty cool. So you can see in this little video clip I'm putting right here. And I'm leaving the sound in so you can hear how crispy that is. I was very surprised. So from now on, whenever I want to dehydrate chicken cooked, and this is pre-cooked meat, chicken or turkey, I'm gonna freeze it first, then pull it back out once after it's been fully frozen, pull it back out, thaw it out, and then dehydrate it. And so not only did that make more room in my freezer doing that as well, because I pulled out, I went back and found a few more jars from 2020, pulled those out, and I've got them on the dehydrator right now, but it's going to be easy use. So I just vacuum sealed this one up. This is the one, since I couldn't fill up another whole jar, this is the one I'm going to be working through first. So you can actually powder that really easily. I just crunched it up with my fingers so I had just real small pieces, but you can make a powder. And I'm going to be trying it uh, the next time I make turkey gravy to go over rice. I'm going to try that instead and see what we think about that. I have a feeling it's going to add a lot more flavor. And I tell you, eating that really crispy, dried turkey just right off the dehydrator trays is really good. It's a super tasty snack. So there's a little tip for you if you want to give that a try, especially if you don't have a freeze dry dryer like I don't because I have no interest in one, especially since I'm always finding ways to dehydrate things that people would normally freeze, freeze dry that can turn out just as good. So another thing that that got me thinking of was last night. Well, yesterday I watched the baby. It's one of the days that I watched the baby and he's just getting busier all the time. <laughs> 
And so usually Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I try to keep my meals, they're either leftovers or I make something very simple that's easy to whip up, either from stuff that I already have canned and so on. Well, since the couple, the night before, I had made up a shrimp veggie stir fry to go over rice and we still had a lot of rice left over. I remembered I had a bunch of gravy that every time I make biscuits and gravy, I would just add the leftover gravy to a bowl and stick it back in the freezer. And the bowl was full. So I pulled out a jar of my home can, homemade home can meatballs last night pulled out the gravy early in the day so it could thaw. So that's what I did. We used the leftover rice. I put that in a, in a glass Corel baking pan, put the gravy over that and then poured, and I used the liquid from this too, and poured it all in there into a baking dish and just put it on the wood stove and let it heat up for Patrick for dinner last night. So that's a way you can have a fast food that's not actually fast food, it's something more healthy that you made from scratch. And I've mentioned that before, but I wanted to bring that up again because it's just a super easy way to have, you know, besides, you know, a lot of us do the home canned chili and the home canned soups, and those can be some instant meals. But this is just another idea. So making up your own meatballs and then canning them, super easy to do. And I don't think I have a video specifically on how to do it, but it is easy. If you already make your own meatballs, like I do have an old video on that, on making your own meatballs. It's the same idea. You just brown them a little bit, put them in your jar, and I do go ahead and put some water in there. And then that way the liquid can be used to make a gravy on its own because it's gonna have a lot of flavor in there. And then you just can it up. So I can for 75 minutes for the pint-sized jars of meatballs. And these ones I did back in 2020, and they're, they're great. So anyway, there's just another idea for you for an instant meal. All right, moving on, some more stuff to talk about. So in a recent video, I think I was talking about some different things to stock up on. I think it was the last one I did on some random foods I've been stocking up on. And in that video, I showed a spirulina powder. It was the first time I ever bought that brand but of spirulina powder. I bought a different brand before, and it was the Star West. It's a brand that I normally really trust. Frontier has actually been my favorite for many years when it comes to herbs, and I always go for the organic. Then somebody brought up to watch out for spirulina, to always check the packaging, because a lot of it comes from China, and it's grown on human waste. <laughs> And I was like, nah, it can't be. Not the one I get because I trust Star West. Sure enough, right on the front of the package. And I never saw it from China. And even though it was organic, it was coming from China. But Anthony's has a spirulina powder. It's not labeled as organic, but at least it's from the U.S. So this is grown in California. So I went ahead and bought that instead. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that other package of spirulina. I'm thinking about just composting it around some of my perennials, like my fruit trees and so on. So I don't want it to completely go to waste. But anyway, thanks to that viewer who pointed that out because I just never thought to look. There's so many things, you know, some things we think to look, you know, we're looking at organic, we're looking at non-GMO. But when it comes to that, I'd rather have something that was not labeled as organic, but I know is non-GMO, is grown in the U.S. and is not grown in human waste. So even though I know humanure can be a very good thing, you know, and you can look into that, I have a video coming out uh, where I touch a little bit about that, and, and uh, but it's got to be done properly. And I don't know how they do it over there overseas, and I just don't trust their methods. So I would... <laughs> Or rather stick with something that comes from the US so now moving on to a couple more things so the eye health video that came out a couple weeks ago well after shooting that video I decided to go ahead and give the bilberry and the eye bright a try so I went ahead and bought those in the powder form that were already encapsulated because I wanted to give it a try and see if it's gonna be something worth um, I can look into growing bilberry because if I can grow blueberries here, I'm pretty sure I can grow bilberries because they're very, very closely related. And I'll see if I can grow eyebright because so far I've been pretty happy with it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taking the bilberry, just one capsule every other day of just the bilberry complex right now foods. And then the other one is a combination of the eyebright and the bilberry. And I take that one on the other day of the week. So I'm taking it every day, but I'm taking one one day and one the next. And here's the reason why was when I was doing the research for that, what I found out about the eyebright is that 
Eye Bright is really good at helping with your nighttime vision. But as a result, if you take too much of it or you take it every single day, it can actually make your eyes more sensitive to the natural daylight during the day, which kind of makes sense. If it's building up your night vision, then yes, I can see that making your eyes more sensitive in the daytime. So switching it up every day seems to be working really good. I feel my, my eyes have been feeling better. I can tell my eyesight is seeming to clarify a little bit more and so it seems to really be doing the trick for my eyes so I do recommend looking into that for yourself and I will go ahead and link to that video I did in the description box down below about eye health where I list off a bunch of different herbs and such and just remember all of those list related videos I'm just trying to touch on a whole bunch of stuff and squeeze it into one video I'm not going to break down every single herb every single thing for each individual person their allergies and the different health issues and the medications they're on because that has to be up to you there's no way I could fit all that into one 15 20 minute video uh when there's just it's, it's too complex so i also have a video and i'm gonna i'm gonna keep referring back to this one on how you can do your own research and also the other thing about the list is so that you can pick and choose the things that are going to work best for you or that are easier for you to grow easier for you to get a hold of or won't interfere with whatever medications or allergies you have it doesn't mean do all of those things it just means here's a list for you to choose from because the more things we have to choose from the better chance we're going to have of finding something that works for us such as for me fever few works great for headaches for somebody else it's not going to work as good or maybe they have an issue with fever few that they can't take it so it's better for them to find another Thing. like maybe wild lettuce is better for one person or white willow bark or all the many other things that you can use for pain relief which I'll link to that video down below but please before you watch it understand when I shot that video I mentioned in there about the Lost Ways book and I hadn't had a chance to really look into it yet so I recommended it in that video but when I started looking further into it I decided it was absolutely not worth the cost. So I'll also link to that video in the description box down below. So I'd, I really want to reshoot that pain video so I can take that clip out of there about that because I don't want to recommend that anymore. So anyway, at least I know the bilberry and the eyebrows working good for me. So something you might want to just check into for yourself there. One of the other things I wanted to bring up was the I think it was in last week's video I was talking about the citrus and well in a couple different videos one was the one I did on quercetin and kind of understanding a little bit more about the difference between quercetin and quinine and how quinine is not found in citrus but quercetin is and how I've been making this basically this health drink not the decoction where you cook it down but a fermented citrus peel drink and you can see I'm already, this is the first one. I initially was going to make vinegar out of it, then decided to use it as a healthy drink. And I've already been using it and I'm loving it. And I love the way it just makes me feel in general. My energy levels, everything has just really been up. And so I've got another one going back there. That's from some citrus peels from at least a year or two ago. So I'm trying to work through some of the old citrus peels. And I know those ones are organic. And then I've got another one I'm going to start here and I'm going to be shooting a separate video just on this alone so um, you can see how I do it but it's really simple basically I started off the same way I do my regular citrus peel vinegar but in this case I want to make sure because I'm not using it as a cleaning vinegar I'm using it to actually consume that I stick with the organic fruits when I'm doing that and yes there's a lot of things I understand about organic that not all of it is or is organic as they claim and there's a lot of false claims out there but sometimes we just have to do the best we can and trust because not every one of them are lying either and try I try really hard to avoid the pesticides and the uh, chemical fertilizers and so when it comes to citrus if you're going to use the peel, organic still is best, and I'm still going to say that because I worked hard to get ourselves off all those medications. We, we weren't on a lot. We were on a couple of over-counter ones for pain and for allergies, and then we were both on the prescription thyroid medication. And one of the ways I was able to get ourselves off that toxic garbage was by trying to go as organic as I possibly can. I know we don't have everything organic as was seen by the spirulina powder, but I do it as much as possible and where I think it matters most and where I can afford it. 
if you want to see my video on the citrus peel vinegar i'll go ahead and link to that down below but the difference is now i'm capping it i'm not even allowing it to go to vinegar at all i'm just allowing it to ferment for a week to two weeks max because i don't want it to turn completely to alcohol but i do want it to work through most of the sugars as well as having that time to really have the quercetin the the lycopene the vitamin c all that infused into the liquid that's why i didn't i'm just working through this with the citrus peel still in there so that they can sit in there as long as possible and i can get the most out of them that way but you can still do the decoction method and i found i had good results off of that too but i find the fermented citrus peels make me feel even better yet so that's what i'm doing here is fermenting them so be watching for a more detailed video on that to come out down the road oh and one more thing i want to say before i forget i i almost forgot i was going to say this when i was talking about the anthony's well somebody noted on that video the last one i did on the baking products that just came out on thursday of this last week and i was talking about anthony's and i mentioned how they have their separate store and then there's their store on amazon we can get better price buying them on amazon especially if you do the subscribe and stay but what somebody told me when they were trying to avoid buying from amazon so they went directly to the anthony store they ordered up the stuff there paid more for it through the anthony store which is a separate website and come to find out amazon shipped it anyway so what that tells me is just like with a lot of places they only sell their stuff it doesn't matter if they're u.s based private business whatever a lot of places only sell their stuff on amazon because it's the easiest it gets them out there the most just like i only have an etsy store i don't have a separate web website for my etsy stuff and etsy has its own issues too and i could go on and on i might do a video about that too because etsy isn't perfect either but it's an outlet for me to sell my products where i can keep the customer and myself safe when we're doing our different business deals but they take a pretty good percentage of the cost of my sales so you know there's there's a there's good and bad to it but the one thing i like about it is i don't have to deal with directly with anybody's financial information i don't even see how a person paid i don't even see if they use credit card bank account paypal i don't see any of that so and I prefer it that way. Okay, well, I think that's it for my this and that for this week. So I got to get busy and shoot at least one or two more videos. And don't forget to check out the videos I'll be linking to down below by clicking on either show more right down here below my channel name or that little gray triangle or arrow you'll see right over here in this corner if you're on a smart device. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.